Hey everyone, in this video, we'll be talking about three of the most important methods that you should know when you're working with object oriented JavaScript. And those three methods are call, apply, and bind. So now we'll actually uh, see that how these three methods work and what problems do they overcome and why should you use them. So before going to call, apply, and bind, let's see that why do we need these three methods so here i have actually created uh, one uh, file called apply bind and inside this file we'll be talking about all these three methods so let's start so first let's uh, take an example and see that why do we need these methods. So let's see that i'm creating an object over here right let me just create an object i'll say person one and for this person one what i'll do is i'll just uh, give this person some properties so let me just say first name First name will be Steve, suppose. Last name, let's give this Rogers. So we have Steve Rogers, right? As our first person. And let's pass a age value, suppose. So let's pass 102 over here. All right. Now what we can do is, uh, now let's just write a function for this particular object. What I will say is print details. This will be a function. And this will actually print your details. So let me just console log over here. And I will say that I am Eve Rogers. So I'll have to take this dot first name. And then I'll have to take this dot last name. And then I'll say I and I am this much years old. So this dot age years old. So this is my first object, a pretty simple object, right? So here, if you haven't watched the video on this keyword, and if you don't know how to create objects, right? So I strongly recommend you to watch our previous videos where we have uh, discussed about objects, where we have discussed about this keyword. We have discussed uh, all these topics very deeply. So you can check out those videos and then you can come back. So let me just uh, quickly uh, go through this. What we are doing here is, so we are creating an object over here. We are uh, defining a method print details is a function when we'll call this function it will actually take the this dot first name this dot last name and this dot age so whenever you use this keyword inside an object uh, inside a function right so basically what it will do is it will start pointing to that object itself so what you are actually doing is when you're saying this dot first name so we are actually getting this first name value from this particular object only right and same for last name same for age so uh, what will be our expected output? The expected output for this will be I am Steve Rogers and I am 102 years old. So this will be the output. So let's see if we're getting that output or not. All right, so let me just clear this once for you and let's run the code. So here you can see I am Steve Rogers and I'm 102 years old. This is how you can create an object and you can use all these, these keywords. Okay, so this was pretty simple. Let me just create one more object over here and I'll say person two. And for this person too, I'll copy all these things and I'll just paste this inside here and I'll just change the values over here. So I'll say Tony Stark. So we have Tony Stark over here who is, uh, let's suppose he's 41 years old. And then what we can do is print details. Uh, this will be the same function. And then let's call this for person two as well. Right. And let's just run the code. So now you will see that the code has been executed and we have all the details of the first object and the second object as well. Seems pretty easy, seems pretty reasonable that okay, this is how this should work. But if you see here that what we are doing, that first name, last name, age. So we have the same keys, but for the same keys, the values are different. Here Steve Rogers 102 and here we have Tony Stark and 41 for uh, the same keys. But if you see that this print detail function, we're actually repeating this function again. So here you don't see any difference because this function and this function, they both are pretty similar. So we are actually violating a particular rule over here. That is the dry rule. The dry rule states that you should not repeat yourself. Do not repeat yourself. The dry rule, right? But we're repeating over here, right? We are creating two objects and we are creating these two functions for them again and again, right? Suppose now we have to create some more objects like this only, right? So we'll have to keep the same idea of these objects, first name, last name, age, and the function. So what we'll be doing is, okay, so we'll be uh, assigning this first name, last name, age, different values so that we are not repeating them. But this print details will always be repeated with every object. So what we can do here is that one solution is that we have discussed in our classes and constructors video that what we can do is we can just create a class and from that class, we can create different objects or we can create a constructor function or from that constructor function, we can create different objects 
and then inside that particular object's prototype what we can pass is that we can pass our method and we can call those methods for different objects that we'll be creating so we're not repeating any function or any method we are just calling that function from inside the prototype and we are using this right if you haven't watched the prototype video i'll strongly recommend you to please go and watch that so you'll have a better understanding of what i'm saying but that solution won't work here because here we are not using any classes or here we are not using any constructor function here we are creating uh, the objects as they are created right by using this curly braces and use creating different objects so what we can do here so that we do not have to repeat these functions for every single object so this is where the call methods come into picture so now let's discuss the call method so what i'll do now is see if we have some way that we can use this particular function for this object as well but without writing it here how can we do that that is the question so let's see how can we do that so what we'll do is we'll just go over here in the call method i mean uh, in uh, down here and what we can use is we can use this person one right so let me just remove this method from here right now I'll remove this function from here so now we don't have any function like print details for this person too so what we can do is we can ask this person one that hey person one can you give us your print detail function so now we have our print detail function, and we will call this and we will call this for person two that's it so what will happen now is that this keyword so this keyword that we are using here so when you are calling this print details for person 2 will start pointing to this particular object that we have passed inside the call method so now whenever we will call this print details method for person 2 then this keyword will start pointing to these particular values right so let me just uh, comment these two calls and let's see what this uh, will give us the output right let's see run code and now you can see how I'm Tony Stark and I'm 41 years old, right? What we are doing is we are actually borrowing the function from the person one. We are saying that, hey, person one, give us this particular function because we need to call this for another object. And then let's call this for person two. So now the, this keyword will start pointing to these particular keys and basically these particular values and you'll get your desired output. Right. So this is how the call method works. Now let's see what actually is the apply method. All right. So now moving ahead with the apply method, what I now uh, want to show you is that suppose we do not want this particular function to be dependent on this particular object. Right. So what you are noticing here is that we have to call this particular uh, function from inside this object. So what we can also do is we can just bring out this function outside of this object and make it global. So now here the object syntax won't work. So I'll have to just say let print details and I'll just add an equal to over here so that it becomes a function expression, right? Now what you can do is this is a function now. So now what we want to do is that we want to make this function globally accessible to every object. Now, if you see, that and I will remove the person one from here and I'll say, okay, call this print details and then uh, print this first name, last name and age. So now what will happen is now this particular function is not dependent on this object. So it will run again. So you can also uh, create your functions and then you can call this functions for different object, right? Regardless of uh, if they are off from some object or if they are written them globally. Right. So you can do that as well. Plus you can also actually give some parameters to this function. So let's suppose that, uh, let me just remove this particular line from here. And what I will say is, or let me add one parameter over here. Let me just add one state, right? And I'll say I am from, or let me add the city over here. City. So here I'll just pass city. So now what you can also do is that when you're calling a particular function with this call method for a particular object, you can also pass the parameter that is expected on that function right after you have defined this object, right? Let me just pass city's name over here. So I'll pass uh, New York, 
right so what will happen is when we are calling this function uh, that is print details so this particular argument here is for this particular parameter so what will happen is tony stark and 41 will get printed for all these things and in uh, place of this city, what will you get now? You will get New York because you are passing this as an argument to this particular function. Let's just run this and see if we are getting that. Let's run the code and now you can see New York over here. And not only this, you can pass multiple parameters and multiple arguments. So I'll just pass city and uh, let's just say power. So the power is the Iron Man armor. So I've passed over this, I've passed uh, this here. And now what you can see is, uh, let me just write uh, my power is, I have the, right, as this. So we have passed Iron Man armor over. So let's see, run this code. And now you can see that I am Tony Stark and I'm 41 years old. I'm from New York. I have the Iron Man armor, right? So this is how you can actually use your uh, call method with multiple arguments and multiple parameters okay, so let me just uh, place this nicely and now you will have it as you want it to or i should place it here yeah so this is how you can get your output right but now we are actually trying to discuss the apply method so what actually apply method allows you is that if you are passing your arguments over here for these parameters in this way if you use the apply method, so let me just use the apply method for uh, person one, right? So I'll just use this, uh, I'll copy this thing and I'll just replace this call method with apply and let it be for person two only. When you're using the apply method, what you're expected to do is you're just expected to put your arguments inside of an array. You cannot uh, directly put your arguments over here. You will have to put your arguments inside of an array. That's the only difference between apply and by, apply and call, right? So you'll have to put these two values like this inside of an array. So when you will put inside of this array your arguments, then only the apply method will work, right? So let's just run this code again, and now you will see two outputs, right? So one output is from the call method. One output is from the apply method so this is the only difference between uh, call and apply that when you uh, use the call method the arguments that you pass can be without an error can be you can just directly pass this like uh, pass your arguments like this but when you're using the apply method you'll have to always pass your uh, arguments inside of an array if you're not using an array so see what will happen you'll encounter an error right because this is basically create list from array like so uh, this is basically your error, right? So you will always have to use an array when you are using the apply method. So this is the only difference between call and apply. Now let's see what actually is your bind method. This is your apply. And let's see what actually bind method does. All right. So bind is actually nothing. Bind is just a method which actually allows you to store your function and to call it at a later stage of time, right? So it is, it basically works as call only, but just one advantage, uh, one added advantage of bind here is that whenever you will try to uh, call, uh, like let's uh, take it with an example. So I'll just copy this and I'll paste it over here. And what I will say is that I'll just use bind over here. Now what I am allowed to do is I can actually store this particular function right which is actually your sprint details function for the person to in a particular object so let me say that uh, my function and inside this particular variable i have actually stored this particular function now now let me just console log this for you so you can clearly see that what has been stored inside my fun and let me just comment these two things for now let's just run this code right so now you can see that function has been bound function has been bound print details function has been bound now so what it means that it has been stored inside this particular variable and whenever you will call this particular variable this will invoke that particular function and it will provide you with your desired results so whenever we'll run this code now you can see that again that particular output is here this is the only added advantage of bind that it actually allows you to store your function on a different variable 
so that you can call it at a later stage of time you can invoke that particular function at a later stage of time whenever you require that particular output so this is how you can actually use these three methods one is the call other is the apply and bind so basically uh, let me just rephrase this for you quickly so call method call method will actually help you to get or borrow a function from uh, another object or you can also uh, basically write a function globally right and you can uh, use this function with different objects by using call in this way right you will just have to pass uh, the object's name whenever you will uh, call the function with the function right and the, that particular function will be called for that particular object then you can use apply uh, the only difference between call and apply is that we'll have to pass your arguments inside an array right and then there is uh, the bind method the bind method actually allows you to store a function in a specific variable and then you can actually call it at a later stage of time so these are all these three methods they come in pretty handy when you're actually working with uh, object oriented javascript uh, yeah so these are the three uh, methods that uh, you must know in object oriented javascript i hope you like the video and this was it for this video and if you like the video do like uh, this video subscribe to our channel share with your peers keep watching scala we'll be soon coming with more interesting topics bye bye see you later